All right, we got lesson 2.2.3. What we're going to do today is the big race finals. So in the last two lessons, we had a uh, the heats for a tricycle race. So we had some uh, preliminary races before the big race, and this is the big one. This is the finals. This is for the bragging rights of the tricycle racing empire here. So what I want to do in this one, we're going to have six riders, so that's going to be a little bit more difficult. We have six riders, and for each rider, you want to give equations, and you want to graph their progress over time. So you're going to want to get out a graph of a piece of graph paper, like we did in the last couple sections. Remember, your x-axis is going to be time in seconds, and your y-axis is going to be distance in meters. So when we pause, go ahead and get out a piece of graph paper and get that started. Okay, I'm going to help you out with the first two writers because these are the winners of our other uh, heats that we had before. We had Elizabeth who won, I think, the first heat, and then Leslie who won the second heat. So here's what they're doing this time. This time we know that Elizabeth is going 11 meters, or is 11 meters into the race after 4 seconds, but is only 13 meters after 12 seconds. Okay, so she's not going too fast because she was at 11 meters at 4 seconds, but then she was only at 2 more meters after 8 seconds pass. She got a flat tire. Poor girl. Next, we've got Leslie. Now, Leslie is going to go 2 meters per second. So she's going to go pretty fast, but she's going to start the race 2 seconds after it begins. Okay, that's different from anything we've done before. What would it look like if she starts two seconds late? You know, before we were looking at it and they have, would have like a head start. This is like a late start, not a head start. So what would it look like having two seconds? Her race starts after two seconds. That's going to be the tricky one. So when you graph these two, uh, make sure to maybe do this one in pencil. Uh, just in case you you get it wrong. So I want you to start just by graphing these two. Okay, then we'll talk about the equations of them. All right, so I'm going to pause. And you guys need to make your graphs. And then graph Elizabeth and Leslie. Then we'll check your work. All right, so make your graph. Graph these two. Then we'll talk about their equations. Right, I'm going to pause in three, two, one. Pausing now. Do the work. Be right back. All right, so here's our first two racers. We've got Elizabeth. They gave us two points. They gave us at four seconds, she was at 11 meters. So there's that point. And then at 12 seconds, she's at 13 meters. So I got that point. Now, two points is enough to make a line. So I just drew a line through those two points. Now, we can actually find her slope from those two points. See, she's the uh, distance is increasing by two and the seconds is increasing by eight. So that's a slope of two over eight. Two over eight reduces to one over four. So I can double check that my line is going correct because it goes up one over four, up one over four, up one over four. And I can also go down one backwards four and that gives me my y-intercept. So since I know what my y-intercept is because my slope reduced, was up 1 over 4, up 1 over 4. That's a positive slope. So 1 fourth is of my slope. And if I go down 1, backwards 4, I get my y-intercept. I have the two things I need for my equation. Okay, so let's write down Elizabeth's equation. She's in green. So this is y equals the slope we said was 2 over 8, which reduces to 1 over 4. So she will be 1 fourth x. And then we saw that her y-intercept was 10, so plus 10. There's her equation. Next one, a little bit tricky here. On this one, Leslie fell asleep or something happened to her. She didn't start until two seconds after the race. So what this tells me is on her graph, at two seconds, she should still be at zero. She should still be at the starting line. So that is the point to zero. Two seconds, she's at the starting line, zero, zero distance. And then her rate was two for every, two meters for every second. So up two over one, up two over one. 
So that tells us so far that her slope is 2 over 1, or 2. So I've got y equals Two x, but what is her y-intercept? I have an x-intercept here, but that's not what goes in our equation. Well, if she's going up two and over one, I can go down two over one, down two over one. So way down here, that becomes her y-intercept, and that is one, two, three, four. That's a negative four for her y-intercept. So her equation would be y equals 2x minus 4. All right, so we've got our first two racers. Now I'm going to give you the next four racers. And it's a little bit of a puzzle because they don't really give you enough information on each of them. You have to kind of look at other people to find them out. So we've got four new riders, rider A, rider B, rider C, and rider D. All right, let's look at the first one. Rider A, their speed is three minutes, uh, three meters every two seconds. And they pass rider B 10 seconds after the race begins. All right, so 10 seconds after the race, that's when they pass them. And then the race is 25 meters long. Rider B gets the same head start as Elizabeth. Well, we already found out Elizabeth's head start right there. And rides one meter every two seconds. Rider C rides half as fast as Leslie, but gets a four meter head start. Rider D gets a one meter head start and catches up to Elizabeth in four seconds. All right, so puzzle through those and see if you can write the equations for rider A, B, or just a uh, graph. Writer A, B, C, and D. Then we'll come back, look at the graphs, and then write the equation for each of them. All right, so graph writers A, B, C, and D. Do it in pencil just in case you mess up. You can kind of make it in pen with a different color after that. All right, so I'm going to pause in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Pausing, do the work. All right, let's look and see what we got. So we've got writer A, their speed is three meters every two seconds, and they pass writer B at 10 seconds. Okay, so since we haven't graphed writer B yet, we can't start with writer A, because all it gives us for writer A is the rate, and we need something else from it. But it does tell us that the race is 25 meters long. So you're gonna want to put a line for a finish line at the top at y equals 25. So there, that light green line, that's my finish line at y equals 25. Okay, so I can't do writer A yet. Let's go to writer B. Writer B gets the same head start as Elizabeth. Okay, so Elizabeth had a head start of 10. So we know that writer B is also going to have a head start of 10. Now, I wrote uh, writer B in this light blue. So I'm going to do y equals something x plus 10, because they have that head start. And they ride one meter every two seconds. So that's 1 over 2. Because the change in y goes on top, the change in x goes on the bottom. Meters is the y. Seconds is the x, so one one half x plus ten. Okay, so graphing that in the light blue, I've got starts at ten, and then up one over two for my slope triangle. So one meter for two seconds, one meter for two seconds, one meter for two seconds, and I keep on going. So there is the line for writer B. Okay, now that we've done writer B, we can actually go back and do writer A. So rider A's speed is 3 meters every 2 seconds. Okay, so for rider A, I use dark blue. So I'm going to start off with their equation, and there are 3 meters every 2 seconds. But I don't have the y-intercept for it. But I do know they passed rider B after 10 seconds. All right, so I'm going to go up to my race. 
Writer B, again, was in this light blue. So I'm going to find 10 seconds down here. So here's 10 seconds. I'm going to go up to 10 seconds. Okay, so there's Writer B at 10 seconds. So I know that Writer A passed them right then. So I put a point right there at 10 seconds and 15 meters. Okay, now their uh, rate was 3 over 2. So I went up 1, 2, 3, over 2. Up 1, 2, 3. I accidentally went over 1, but then noticed my mistake. So I went over 2. Up 3 over 2. Okay, now to find our y-intercept, we can go down 1, 2, 3, and over 2. 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 It looks like they started right at the origin. So their y-intercept would be 0. So that is a good enough equation for them. y equals 3 halves x plus 0. Okay, let's look at writer C. Writer C I did in yellow. All right, so let's find out their equation. They ride half as fast as Leslie. Okay, Leslie is going two meters every second. So half of that would be one meter every second. So one X, or we can just write X. And then they get a four meter head start, so plus four. Okay, so graphing that, I go up four, and then again, their rate was half of Leslie, so she was two over one, so they're gonna be one over one. So I go up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, and I keep doing that. And there is their graph for writer C. All right, last writer. Writer D gets a one meter head start. I did this in orange. So Y equals, one meter head start means plus one at the end. It doesn't tell me the rate, but I know that they catch up to Elizabeth in four seconds. Okay, so Elizabeth, she was in, see I wrote it down over here so I could figure out who was who. Uh, so Elizabeth, four seconds, I go up here. So at four seconds, so I went down to four seconds, found Elizabeth in green right here. And that's at 13 meters. So I know that they had a one meter head start, and then they cross at this point. Now, if I go up 10 and over 4, so that's from this point here, their uh, y intercept, to this point here at 411. So I'm going up 10 over 4. 10 over 4 reduces to 5 over 2. And we can see that it actually works because if I go up one, two, three, four, five, and over two, it's on the line. So up five over two, up five over two, up five over two, up five over two, I keep on going. So they're going to be five over two x. All right, so I've got all my equations and I've got all my graphs. All right, so using those equations and the graphs, we're going to answer some questions about the big race. All right, so I want you to look at these questions and look at your graphs and see if you can answer them. Who won the race? Who came in last? And if you uh, did any mistakes on your graph, you can go back and pause and look at the graph that I did to do that. But anyways, so who won the race? Who came in last? Which riders were in first place other than the winner for a while? And how long were they in first? Okay, so who was the leader until the winner came along? And how long were they in first place? How many seconds did it take to win the race? Okay. Uh, how fast was rider D traveling? And how fast, who fast, that's supposed to be how fast. Wow, that's bad. How fast was Elizabeth traveling? And use your unit rates. At one point in the race, four different riders were the same distance from the starting line. Who were they? And when did this occur? Okay, so at some point, there are four riders that were tied. Who were they? 
and when did it occur? And lastly, what would the graphs look like if a rider fell off their tricycle? Okay, so they're going along and all of a sudden they fall. What would that look like? All right, so answer those what's that, six questions. We'll come back and check your answers. Five, four, three, two, one, pause. All right, first question, who won the race? Where we, all we have to do is look at this finish line here and see who the first is to cross it. And it looks like in orange, this is Rider D. Rider D's in orange, they crossed first. The next one to cross the finish line was red, that's Leslie. Next one was dark blue, that's Rider A. And then we've got Rider C in the yellow. Um, I don't have the other ones crossing because it took them so dang long to finish the race. But it looks like here is Rider B. They would have come next. And poor Elizabeth with a flat tire. It took her a long time to finish this race. So she came in last. So first place is Orange. So that's Rider D. And last place is Elizabeth. So who won the race? I believe that that is Rider D won the race. Who came in last? Elizabeth came in last. Next, which riders were in first place other than the winner for a while, and how long were they in first? All right, so first place means that they are the farthest distance at any time. So at zero seconds, we've got a tie for first. We've got light blue, which is rider B, and dark blue, which is rider A. So at zero seconds, A and B are tied. They're they've gone the farthest in the race. Okay, so at one second, it looks like rider B in light blue, they're in the lead. There's nobody that has at two seconds that is farther than them. Let's go two more seconds. Four seconds into the race, it looks like rider B is still in the lead. And then boom, right here, orange rider D overtakes them. So they're tied at this point right there. Okay, so our question is, right here, how many seconds into that race is that? All right, so if you're looking at that, you'd have to say, oh, I don't know, it looks like, what's that, maybe four and a half seconds? There's actual ways that you can test it out to see, but we haven't gotten there yet. So we'll just estimate right now. We'll say it looks like it took four and a half seconds for writer D to overtake writer B. So for our answer for that one, we're going to say that writer B yeah, writer B was in first for four and a half seconds. And then Rider D took over after that. All right, how many seconds did it take to win the race? All right, so our winner was the orange one. That's Rider D. And right here is where they crossed. And they're not crossing at what we call a lattice point. It's like the intersection of these lines. So it's kind of a little bit hard to tell. It looks like maybe that's going to be, how many seconds is that? It looks like it's going to be, nine point something. Hmm. I want to be exact though. So how would I find exactly what time Rider D crosses that finish line? Well, we would use Rider uh, D's equation. Rider D's equation was y equals five halves x plus one. And I want to find out when they cross this finish line. Well, where's the finish line? The finish line is at 25 meters. 25, where would that go? The Y or the X? Well, meters is the Y. So I would plug in 25 for Y. I would substitute, I'd evaluate, plug in 25 there. I'll do it up here. So I'm going to do 25 equals... 5 over 2x plus 1. 
So I'd subtract 1 from both sides and get 24 equals 5 over 2x. And then I'd multiply by 2 fifths on both sides. Okay, remember this is multiplying by 2 and dividing by 5. 5 does not go into 24, so I'm just going to go 2 times 24 is 48. And 5 times 1 is 5. So our answer is 48 fifths of a second. But we can do better than that. We would probably want a decimal answer for here. So how many times does 5 go into 48? It goes in there 9 times with 3 left over. So that would be 9.6. So we now know it took 9.6 seconds for writer D to win. All right, how fast was writer D traveling? Well, we can go straight to their rate here, 5 over 2. But we want it in unit rates, so 5 over 2 would be 2.5 meters per second. So writer D was going 2.5 meters per second. Who fast? How fast was Elizabeth traveling? All right, Elizabeth was going one fourth. One divided by four is 0 0.25, so she was going 0 0.25 or 0 0.25 meters per second. So that's in unit rates, remember, because unit rates, the denominator is always one. Um, at one point, at one point in the race, four different riders were at the same distance from the starting line. Who were they and when did this occur? All right, so we want to see where four racers intersected. And we can see that it's right here. It looks like this is Elizabeth. The yellow is writer C. The dark blue is writer A. And red is Leslie. So we've got Elizabeth, Leslie, uh, writer A, and writer C. All right, so that's who they were. When did it occur? Well, this is at eight seconds and 12 meters into the race. So we can see down here that this is occurring eight seconds into the race and at 12 meters. All right, so this is eight seconds into the race. at 12 meters. So there was a big tie going on there between four different people. All right, so what would the graph look like if somebody had fallen off of their tricycle? Well, if they're falling off their tricycle, they're not gaining any more meters, right? So let's say that writer D, at this point right here, falls off. Well, time would keep going, but the distance would not. So if time keeps going, it goes this way, but the distance doesn't increase. So that would end up being a horizontal line. Horizontal. All right, we got a couple more questions. All right, so is the point 6, 8 a solution to the equation of Leslie's line? Is the point 810 a solution to the equation of Leslie's line? And what is a, or why is a point on the line called a solution to the equation of the line? So answer those three questions and I'll get back with you. All right, we wanted to see if 6, 8 was a solution for Leslie. So 6, 8, it looks like the red line does go through 6, 8. So we would say yes, that is a solution. Now, is there a way mathematically that we could check it? Of course. We could use Leslie's equation, which was y equals 2x minus 4. 6 is the x, 8 is the y. So I'd plug in or evaluate for 8. And I'd plug in 6 over here. 
So I plugged in 6 for x, 8 for y. Uh, this gives me 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. So I get 8 equals 8. It makes a true statement. So that means, yes, it is a solution. All right, let's look at the point 8, 10. Let's start with a graph. 8, 10, 8, and then going up to 10. 8, 10 looks like it's right here. And it does not look like Leslie's line goes through that point. So we would say, no, it's not a solution. All right, so we're going to say, nope, not a solution. And we can prove it using the same equation. So I'm going to plug in 10 for the y. And I'm going to plug in 8 for the x. 2 times 8 is 16. 16 minus 4 is 12. And 10 does not equal 12, so it's not a solution for the equation. So that tells me that her point at 8 seconds, she was not 10 meters into the race. So why is a point on the line called a solution? It's called a solution. This one was called a solution because it made the equation true. Points on the line make the equations true statements. All right, we got one last thing to cover really quick. We've got our methods and meanings. So in our methods and meanings for today, we're going to look at the x and the y intercepts. So they were very nice, and they gave us a graph here. So we've been talking about y intercepts quite a bit. So a y intercept would be crossing right there. Notice that the x value is 0, and the y value is 2. Anytime you have a y intercept, the x value is always 0. For an x-intercept, we're looking for it where it crosses the x-axis. So here we've got this, and notice that the y-intercept, or the y-coordinate, is 0. Because any time we cross the x-axis, the y-value would be 0. Okay, we can actually use that to solve without looking at graphs. So here's an equation, 2x plus 3y equals 6. This is called standard form. So it's kind of like a uh, slope-intercept form, just written in a different way. So we've got 2x plus 3y equals 6. If we wanted to know what the x-intercept was, remember on the x-intercept, the y value is 0. So all I would have to do is let y equal 0. So I'd get 2x plus 3 plug in 0, because at the x-intercept, y is 0 equals 6. Well, 3 times 0 is 0, so it's just 2x equals 6. So the x-intercept would be 3, 0. If I wanted to find the y-intercept, all I have to do is plug in 0 for x. So I plug in 0 for x, and 2 times 0 is 0, so I get 3y equals 6, and y equals 2, and I get my y-intercept. You don't need to graph to find your intercepts. You just take the opposite letter of the intercept and make it into 0. For the x-intercept, you make y 0. For the y-intercept, you make x 0, and then you can find your intercepts. All right, that's all I got for you today. Do your homework. Be good. Tell your parents you love them. Bye-bye.